So I want to introduce you to someone who's a friend of the show. Laura Meddens was first on the show, oh, about a, over a year ago. And uh, I was quite taken with her story. Number one, she's just a, a marvelous person, very affable. And um, she is a survivor on many levels. Uh, number one, she's been visually impaired for many, many years, and then her vision declined. And we're going to hear all these different stories and, and how they uh, one affected and impacted the other. But more importantly, how she has uh, become so resilient. Um, one of the things I talk about when I speak at schools, colleges, and corporations is about overcoming adversity. And everyone's story is different. And yes, some stories are just, you know, uh, make you just stop in your tracks and just go like, how can somebody survive and go on? And this is one of the stories where someone just says, you know what? Yes, I've experienced adversity. And this is what I like to do. And this is a passion of mine. And I'm going to continue to do it. And so her artistry has not been lessened. It's blossomed. It's become something uh, that's larger than life. It's a, more of an expression than she can probably even articulate. So with that in mind, I should introduce you to the incredibly talented Laura Menz. Hello, Laura. Hi, Mark. Come on a little bit closer okay. to that microphone. I will. Yeah. Yes. Don't, uh, Thank don't you. be afraid to grab that microphone. Okay. We're at a candlelit yes. dinner, Yes. right? Okay. Table for two in New York City. By the way, welcome to New York City. Thank you. How many times have you been here? I've been here three times, I think, right, Jeff? Mm -hmm. But two times have been without me. Yes. So this is by far going to <laughs> be your best experience. Yes. But you have a great day tonight with Sir Elton John, I believe. I yes, I'm yeah. going there. Yeah, I'm still yes. waiting for an invite. And Jan is here from the Seeing Eye Dog in Morristown, New Jersey. Well, I Hi, got, Jan. I, Hello. I got an invite from Rick and Jan. Oh, Rick and Jen. Okay. Yes. Well, well, yet to be decided. Anyway, welcome to New York City uh, you. with your guide dog Nugget, who we kind of uh, referred to earlier in the interview. Now, um, there are many, many chapters to all of our lives, but you certainly have uh, are no different. Um, and one of your chapters includes um, an examination that kind of went awry. I'll tell you the whole story. If, okay. if I can do it in my way, then I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> well, you know because your way better than me. I'm not a native English speaker, so I'm trying to do that correctly and understand what you're saying, okay? Um, the thing is that I went diving in Curacao, and I'm a diabetic type 1. And what year was this, Laura? Yes, and uh, this was in 1993, yes. And I wasn't allowed to dive as a diabetic, but I did. So I had little veins that occurred. And the moment I said I was a diabetic, the eye specialist who wasn't finished with his study yet started to laser. And that moment, my eyes started to get blood inside. And they wanted to stop that. And the eye started bleeding. So my retina got scar tissue. And that's one of the reasons I had a um, sight going from 100% vision to 0 0.3. So it was all of a sudden it was a lot less. And then they operated me several times to take the blood out. And that made it better in one eye, 30%, my right eye. And they forgot to put insulin in the the um, intravenous intervenous, and they added glucose water so my blood sugar went up very high quite the opposite of their quite goal quite the opposite and so that I became blind completely and right I could see 30% they got that back and it was stable for 14 and a half years then in two, 2007 I don't want to talk, talk about that because that was very personal but it had to do with a hit and um yeah, a hit, well, I can say, from my ex-husband. And that made it bad, and I couldn't see anymore. So that's the whole story. But I really, and that's really because I start um, feeling uncomfortable when I talk about this, because it's not important. Now I'm here, Laura, and I paint, and I can see visualizations that I never could imagine that mm. a blind person well, could have. it is kind of important. I don't want to put words in your mouth, because yeah. everything kind of, formulates who we are and what we become because a near-death experience allowed you to have visions correct and um, allow the the mind's eye to see yes one of the reasons but the other reason was the death of my father 
uh, in 2010. And I could see him then very clearly. And um, that made me think now, when I look back, it really re I realized why I had all those experiences, yes. It's true what you're saying, but it's um, more important to realize that what you have now and the mindset you're in now at this moment makes you live. So artistry has always been something that's drawn and felt important to you? It has, yes. Yeah. From what age? Very early on? Uh, very early on, because my father was an architect, and I used to love mm -hmm. him to see him draw and love him look at old buildings. and I, I love that. Yeah. It's peaceful when you watch peaceful. somebody yes. even just sketching something. Yeah. It's one of those things mm -hmm. I could just sit there. Even my daughter, when she draws with her crayons, it's just very relaxing, and it's, you just get lost into their movement. Yes, I find that to be beautiful. Yeah. So when did you find that painting was such a major release? Was it when your eyes and your vision decreased even more? Um, and, you, and tell me about how you realized that a blank canvas, black, yes. is, is, is your blank canvas, is your beginning. Yes, my beginning, because I had those visualizations in 2015, my father died in 2010, and they went away, and in 2015 I suddenly got these beautiful visualizations and it sounds very spiritual and I do believe but I don't be believe in a religion um, I always saw a lit candle in a different color so it, it was a white candle and the black part is for me it's eternity so I had I saw the black and I saw the candle lit and burning and that's the tango painting that I made Fascinating. Yeah. Is that something that you always still see when you think about that? When you just no. described it? I can't get it back. Mm. It's always um, something that happens. And I have visualization now as well with different colors. Um, and it can stay there for a half a day and it can change. And so, I, yeah. Please go ahead. And I think it comes from my soul that it's opened up and that I can see certain images and um, I put that onto canvas. But I can only do it when I'm very happy. Well, I'm sure we're, we always do the best work when we're happiest. Well, there are artists that painted when they were very, that, very you're sad. Very, you're correct. Yeah. You're right. Yes. Jackson Pollock, number mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Uh, booze and depression yeah. did wonders for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or for us, not for yes. him. <laughs> yeah. Um, so talk about the actual black canvas. Yes. And why that um, works for you. Because I think when I look like I'm looking now uh, in my uh, my uh, soul, I can I can see black and a blue candle, which means uh, something for me. It's a it's something that I can see certain things in, and it's a very nice contrast. So that's why I paint it. So the colors pop much they more pop, for you. They pop much more, and the nice thing is. Um, if you look at my paintings, people always see their own story in my paintings. And speaking of your paintings, we're going to roll a video right now okay. of, of your work uh, behind an easel. And here's Laura Meddens. My name is Laura Meadens and I love to paint. This is just getting the basic thing all black because it's nice to have it all black. Now I'm going to start with the red. Usually I put paint on my fingers and the texture is so nice to feel and for me it's easier because then I know exactly where to go with the colour that I have in my hand. I usually start with a black background because the visualisations that I have have usually got black in the background. 
um, in front of those visualizations is for example a bright orange or red or green or white and that makes it uh, very easy for me to see what I'm seeing. I get inspired by a lot of things, especially nature and people. Many people that ask me how can I paint when I'm blind and my answer to them is that there are many people that can see but don't have a vision. I try to put my vision and my feeling on canvas. Cue the video please. Video's coming. Here we are. My name is Laura Meadows, and I love to paint. This is just getting the basic thing all black because it's nice to have it all black. Now I'm going to start with the red. Usually I put paint on my fingers and the texture is so nice to feel and for me it's easier because then I know exactly where to go with the colour that I have in my hand. I usually start with a black background because the visualisations that I have have usually got black in the background. Um, in front of those visualisations is, for example, a bright orange or red or green or white and that makes it uh, very easy for me to see what I'm seeing. I get inspired by a lot of things, especially nature and people.
There are many people that ask me, how can I paint when I'm blind? And my answer to them is that there are many people that can see but don't have a vision. I try to put my vision and my feeling on canvas. Magnificent work. I love the flow, the energy, and the movement in your work. Thank you. And without a paintbrush, your yes. index finger. <laughs> well, all <laughs> my amazing. fingers. All your fingers. All my hands and my arms as well sometimes. And the funny thing is when I'm busy and I see the visualization, I um, sometimes get from inside, like, get this or get that. And I use different things. Yeah. And... That's the nice thing that I like when I'm painting. That when I finished, people, several people look and they say, gosh, I can see a dragon or mm. I can see a sneaky dragon. Sure, yeah. And then if 10 people say the same thing, I'm happy because then I know, gosh, it's got something that people see and it's, it's fantastic. I see that you devised a system. It looks like you count down or you segment your painting yes. when you say so you know where you left off or yeah. where you want to conclude or rejoin. Mm -hmm. Was that a strategy that was hard to come up with and or devise? No, it's it's something that happens when I'm uh, busy and I've 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 always known that windows, um, when I could see, are divided into, uh, you know, that the the their square quadrants their, exactly. So you can just imagine that too and. Um, Place your hands to feel, because I see with my hands now. And, um, yeah. Discuss the colors and how you um, developed a pattern and or scheme to discern colors and what color you were obviously uh, looking for or seeking and actually from the palette to the canvas. Um, I have a special uh, wood container where seven bottles fill it, f fit. And so I have 21 bottles next to each other. And I, I learn that off by heart, and I know exactly what to get. But the visualizations give me the color. So if I see, for example, a yellow, it can be a gold yellow, but it can be a bright yellow. And I've placed my paintings in such a way that I know where the gold is and where the bright yellow is. So then I grab them while I'm busy, because I'm very into a certain state. Maybe the state that you're in when you're into yoga. Mm. Um, I'm in a kind of trance and I don't take any drugs or anything. I don't drink any alcohol, but it's just a state that you're in, that you're connected to the, um, yeah, I don't know. It, it's very special. And then I start to paint and I see the colors. So that's what I grab. Well, it's fascinating on many levels. Number one, that you're able to combine these colors and, and, and produce other colors which create an object or an mm. image or a motion or an ocean or its nature or its people. Um, and it's fascinating that, number one, you can see that. But then, more importantly, number two, that you can actually convey that on the canvas. Yes. Yeah. That's the non-local stuff, <laughs> I think. Really? Yeah. How much of your environment impacts your work? Where you are in Holland and what you do? I think the environment does have influence, nature especially, when I walk with it and I get through, a wood, or through the woods or um, greenery. It's very special to me, hearing water as well. And uh, yeah, that, that helps. That helps to get more visualizations. Would you be the painter that you are today if your vision didn't decrease? No, absolutely not. Does that boggle your mind? You no, find that fascinating? I, think, I think it's fascinating. Sure. I think it's, it's very nice when I, I enjoy myself when people say, whoa, <laughs> I can see this and I can see that because then my imagination starts to run again. Well, and, uh, please go ahead. Yes. Um, so that's really, and people enjoy looking at my paintings and become happy and I like that. Well, for a good reason because they're all-encompassing. They really draw and this is coming from a visually impaired person as well. Uh, it's visually stimulating and just really kind of pulls you in and we're going to look at 
uh, a few different paintings so you can describe them to our listeners. If you're not on Facebook Live, you can go on the Progressive Radio Network page on Facebook Live. You can actually see these photos. And hopefully you were because uh, I was remiss in saying this before the airing of the video. But the first picture of the painting we're going to look at is Botanical Surge. Botanical Surge. If you can uh, bring that up, we'd appreciate that. So you can describe that, Laura. That was, uh, I remember, I was in a beautiful garden and um, it was spring. And that evening I arrived home at 11 o'clock and I started to paint it. So I can describe it, but everybody sees spring and sees flowers and mm. things coming up in springtime. It smells like spring when yes. I look at it. And and that's what I created at I think two o'clock in the middle of the night. Yeah, or in the morning. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Celebration is another very vastly intricate but uh, vibrant painting. And that's on the screen now. Yes. Celebration is a red with pink and uh, black background. Um, I sometimes, when I wake up in the morning, see certain figures. And that started out in LA, Los Angeles. And these figures are always happy. So mm. I started to uh, put them on, on the canvas with a black background, because uh, then it pops. And yeah, there are figures are being happy. Or and, in, 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 and that's dance too. Absolutely. The yeah. emotion that I feel evoked is that I want to become part of that painting and be joyously dancing throughout it. Nice. Mm. Our next painting is Cross Currents. That's a special one. Gorgeous. Yes. It, um, Why is it special? Well, um, because it's, um, it's actually called Wild Orgasms. That's quite special. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everyone is. That's why it's so special. Yeah. Okay. But it's called Cross Currents now because um, I have a very good friend who said, you can't do that in America. Well, but I'm from Amsterdam, so I can say anything. Absolutely. And everything and so, goes on the Progressive Radio Network. Exactly. Absolutely. And, and I can see why that because um, Cross Currents, number one, I think they're both apropos titles of uh, Cross Currents from what I can see from six feet across the room. It seems very uh, luminescent. Uh, I feel like I'm in the bottom of water looking up. Okay. Uh, remember yeah. those days in Curacao? Yes. When you were diving? Mm -hmm. um, that that image that would get uh, washed and uh, the, the flow and the current that would distort images? Yes. That's I what know. I feel that I that it evokes that emotion. Okay. And then the um, orgasmic one, we'll just leave that to everyone's inter <laughs> personal interpretation. Exactly. <laughs> Do you see white? Okay, moving on. <laughs> uh, dance is next. Yes. Well, that's, I made that the same day or the ne same night as the, uh, the celebration one. Figures again. And um, probably people dancing. And uh, yeah. It's, it's white with a stripe of pink because the figures that I actually sometimes just see are wearing white gowns with a um, pink trim and a nice black stripe at the bottom. But they're men and women and children that are always happy. The intricacy is just amazing, Laura. You're quite good. Mm. Do you, you set yeah. to do anything in a particular order or just exactly how you see it? Exactly how I see it. And I get steered by doing things um, that are, well, that I feel. Yeah. So it's, it's really from my soul. I, I don't say heart. I can say heart too. But it's actually, yes, it's from my heart. And I, I, I try to really follow that and put that onto canvas and let people think when they look at them because they tend to see more things when they look at it more than once. Yes. I think that's true of a lot of different things because I think mood affects everything. Mm. Um, because when you're mad, you can't think clearly. You can't think uh, with a, a good solution. Um, you just see red uh, for some people. 
Um, so I think you have to be in the right mood, number one, to go see art, to experience photography, to experience anything that's going to require introspection. I think so, too. Mm. Yeah. And on that note, uh, the next painting is called Appropriately Transcendence. Wow. That looks like a shot from Hubble. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> wow, that's just immensely complex. It is complex, and I, I, I felt that when I made it, too. It came up in my mind very quickly, or yeah, mind or whatever, and I placed it on canvas and let it dry, and, um, yeah, people can see your face in it, and um, most people can, actually. Yeah. Interesting. I'm far away from it, so I can't see that to me from from this point it looks transcendence is a great name and title because it has uh, an evolution above. yeah to yeah yeah above. that yes yeah, a, a height uh, component yeah. to it mm -hmm. but also uh, again from me being visually impaired five feet away from it, it also has a sea component a water and or an aerial globe world uh, earth component as well very nice some people see butterfly in it too well, they're probably in uh, Amsterdam and, and smoking the ganj, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's about pot today, huh? Everything goes back to pot. Yes. So what, speaking of Holland and, yes. and living in Holland mm. uh, as a person, as an artist with a disability, mm. uh, what is the uh, availability for services, for financial services, for even transportation uh, compared to the United States? Is it easily accessible or are things hard to acquire? I'll tell you my story because there are a lot of people that get a lot of help, but my problem was that my parents traveled a lot throughout the world and I traveled as well because it got it in my blood. So I left from um, the Netherlands and studied, wanted to study in Curaçao to do my, my um, practical time there. And that's when I got visually impaired. So I didn't have the things that you usually get mm. when you become blind. You're part of the system. I'm not, yeah, I wasn't, I was part of the system, but they didn't accept it that I was in Curaçao at the time. So I didn't get anything in the Netherlands except for taxi. And they're helping a little more often now because I'm showing my paintings around. Being very vocal about yes. what you and can and cannot receive. Exactly. And... Um, well, I haven't been focal about it at all. I think I should do it myself, be independent, and not be... Yes, a burden of society. No, I don't want that. I want to work and see if people love my paintings, try to sell them, and or sell them, and then do it myself. And that's really very important to me, that I can live my own life as I would mm. love to, but it's a burden in uh, in in um, the Netherlands if you don't get anything. And I think in America, when you have a visually when you're a visually impaired, you do get a lot of help, which is fantastic because I see it at the Seeing Eye as well, where there's people who come in, who get um, help, and um, yeah, get, get if they want to finish a study, they can. It wasn't possible for me when I came back to the Netherlands. It wasn't possible. Although I've got a Dutch passport, it wasn't possible. And that might be the, the thing that's going on around the world, that people, when you come from abroad, get more things done when you, yeah, if, if you're a survivor of a, a war. And that's, you have to help these people, but it's a pity that people that to come from the country itself don't get the, the help as well. Because mm. that makes it very difficult. Oh, very challenging. Well, luckily for you, you're very uh, gifted, uh, you're worldly, and you're educated, and I you're a survivor. Yes. So yes. all those components, um, a lot of those you know, people with disabilities are you know, uh, across the gamut in terms of socioeconomic, uh, you name it. Um, but you're fortunate enough to have a good, solid backbone I have to. Yeah, you have to. And you want to be self-sufficient. I want to be self-sufficient, but it's, it is a, a hard way. And I think people don't realize that because I am always... Well, being an artist, number one, 
-hmm. is not an easy route. No, it isn't. Um, yeah. To get people to appreciate, understand, and uh, to be able to create something that's so important to you that helps you survive in this world like money. <laughs> you yeah. Know? And money nice. really should be irrelevant, shouldn't it? it should Everybody be, yes. should be able to eat, to drink, and to just enjoy life mm. without the fuss of money. That's what I believe. And I, just love. And I, I remember saying that the last time I had an interview with you, talking about love is the main thing. No wars, just love. That should be the core. I, I think mean, it's so. The, the core of I me. Think so. uh, I think it's the core of you. Yeah. It's the core of those paintings because those paintings are, even just the name of them, they're not negative, they're uh, positive, um, they're very bright, they're colorful. And so that's not coming from your vision, that's coming from your heart. It is, absolutely, yeah. So yeah. that right there defines exactly who you are and your perspective on humanity in the way you wish it would be. Yes, everybody should really have that feeling of, of no fighting, no guns, no, you know, all that stuff. It's just terrible. So you've had some great exhibits uh, yes. in Holland and uh, mm. L.A., correct? L.A., um, Amsterdam, and uh, Amsterdam, quite a few, yeah. And when is your next exhibit set for? Um, I've got one in Haarlem at the moment, but I've got a very special one coming up in Amsterdam in the Zouderkerk. And that's where, where Rembrandt made his Nachtwach. Wow. Yes, that's what the Japanese and the Chinese say. That's pretty impressive. It is. You can look it up on Google and it's there. So that's funny. How does that reverberate with you? Very. I think it's very nice that I was invited to go and show my work there. Yes, well, going to, yes. So as an artist, sorry for my naive question, do most works get sold through people going to exhibits or through media, through the circuits, through people talking in the industry and they go to your website and they come visit you? Um, or everything? I think usually people call me and ask if I want to show my work. Yes. what well, That's what's happened up till now. And uh, people talk and, and um, yeah. Do you have private paintings that you don't want to share? Um, because they're too personal? No, I actually don't. People can see my paintings, but there are private paintings that I that are for me. Mm. Mm. Do you remember painting, um, and it could have been in a totally different style and method, um, and maybe not even on a canvas, uh, when you were younger, and what you felt compared to how you feel now when you paint? Yes, I can. I can. I can. When I used to paint, when I could see, um, it was very. You, you look at something and you, you try to copy it and when it's not right, the little line, you correct it and you keep correcting because it's, yeah. it's never good enough. And with this, I can't really correct it. It's just the way it is. That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it and it's, it's, that's it. Um, and it's very much more intense to paint now because it's really through my heart and soul. Yeah. Did it give you as much pleasure when you painted when you were younger? Um, in a different way. Yeah, but sure. Yeah. Did you feel free when you were younger when you painted? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. 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 So there are many components to living with a visual impairment. Um, and I imagine uh, for me, being visually impaired as well, I think they come out in many different ways. I do carpentry. I don't sell carpentry. Uh, I make objects and tables and Lovely. yeah, I love it. That's that's my mm. painting. I love uh, making decks and furniture and just the smell of wood. I went to Beautiful. a factory. Um, I told this story a week or two ago in Kentucky recently on a business trip, and I went to a factory where they make the most uh, popular baseball bat in America called the Slugger, Louisville Slugger. And I walked in that factory and I was just, oh, just the smell mm -hmm. of the, the wood alone, this timber, this raw timber that they carve into such a beautiful piece that obviously is part of America's pastime, baseball. I'm not even a baseball fan, but I appreciate the sport and the, the symbolic nature of just a 
piece of wood being carved into something that beautiful yeah. you know can create so much happiness <clears throat> and energy in uh, America's favorite pastime so when I think of outlets and painting and um, whether you have a good day or a bad day painting and and your fingers and as your brushes will always be there for you and serve never let you down no have you ever done a painting that you uh, since your visual impairment has been to this degree where you felt that it was just subpar and you weren't happy with it and you discarded it? Yes, I've had that. I've had it um, a couple of times and I put the painting away and I let it rest. And then all of a sudden I get through what I have to do with it. So I do it and it becomes one of the best paintings. Yeah. I, I say one of these uh, three questions that I get all the time. Uh, one of them is, uh, so are you blind? I get, so you don't know what I look like, which has nothing to do with me, right? When people say you don't know what I look like, usually women would say that to me when I was single. Or the third thing is, so what can you see? So the million dollar question for you is you're asked all those three questions and more. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard to describe to anyone um, how one can see because hearing is easier to describe, but sight um, it's a little bit more difficult because it's so unique and so hard to define in a diminished way unless it's extremely severe. But for you, it may be a bit easier to describe since you did experience good vision at a young age and obviously it decreased and then it drastically decreased. So do you have a way to articulate what you can see now knowing what you were able to see? Yes. Very much so. Um, not always, but it is usually easy to describe. Um, do you want me to tell you what I see now? I would love it if you did. Okay. I have a black background again. And to the right, so I have a line right from the top to the bottom. And divided in two, half, two halves. And the right part is green, which means to me love. And the left part is red. And one um, part is black. So it's, it's red, a little bit of black, and the whole half part green. It might be a little difficult to, to understand. But if no. you have a matchbox, let me put it this way, because that's the way I'm visualizing it now. A matchbox, half of it is green, a little bit is black, and the other part is red. Does that change whether you're indoors or out, uh, outside on a sunny day? No, it depends on who I have in front of me. Ah, and I see, and I see these, uh, these little silvery dots going through it. So I'm love. I represent love. Half of it, yeah. I'm only half love. <laughs> I'm only half of a lover. <laughs> Who's the other half, Nugget? <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, that was, that was a good description. Yeah. So, um, yes, it does depend. I guess it's, it's specific to the setting. Um, but if we were outside, would those colors be lighter? No, they, they stay the same. They do. Uh, it changes. The moment I look towards Jan, uh, they change. And so I don't know if it's the... I, I, I believe it's just my message for me hmm. alone. I'm describing it now and I'm trying to put it on canvas. Uh, when I can, um, but it, it's my way to see people and my way to see the world. And um, yeah, that's really it. And the nice thing about the paintings is everybody sees their own story in it. That's the beauty of art, interpretation. Interpretation, yeah. Laura Meddens, where would you ultimately like to see your art and how would you like to have it impact the world? Well, there's a very nice museum, isn't there, in, 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 in New York? Never heard of it. You've heard <laughs> of it. <laughs> um, we actually had a curator on here years ago, actually about mm -hmm. two years ago, and she was visually impaired. Yes. I have to tell you about her. Yeah. Her last name is, I think, uh, Gisso. Mm. Are you familiar with her? No, no. I think Annie Gisso. Anyway, I can tell you about that later. Okay. But yeah, the Metropolitan Museum of Art. That would exactly. Be yeah. 
but I, I think it's beautiful. Or I mean, MoMA? I, I think it would be beautiful when people just enjoy my mm. art and like to hang it above their couch. Do you have your art on your walls at home? Yes, everywhere. 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 Yeah. Do you feel that artwork? Yes, I do. I mean, yeah. not literally feel it, but I mean, do you feel the presence of it? Yes, I do. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Do you change them around or do they stay in that same position as they're initially hung? Um, no, I change or... them around. But I have one that always stays in the same place, and that's Tango. What is your next painting? I have no idea. No idea. That's a funny thing. That's great. Well, yeah. what a great canvas to you have right next at your disposal being in New York City because the activity and electricity, it's so palpable. So being visually impaired in New York City can be daunting mm. and I imagine also can be exhilarating as well, especially when you go to the, the most famous stadium in the world tonight and Sir Elton John hits the stage. You'll be able to hear that and experience it most likely better than anyone in that stadium tonight because well, you're just <laughs> focusing on the sound. Yes, and I, you know what the nice thing is to tell you as well, that when um, I see a concert, I get beautiful visualizations. It's so nice. I heard, because it's euphoric. Yeah, and I, I heard a, a concert before with all people's voices, you know, just voices mm -hmm. and, and a couple of instruments. But it was just so beautiful, and I could see white light with gold, and it was just beautiful. I remember that. It was, um, yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. LauraMedens.com. That's M E D D E N S.com. Your artwork's on there. Contact information where your art will be exhibited, shown, and your bios, stories about, and more videos as well. So please check out LauraMedens, M E D D E N S.com. Laura, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for making this a, a proper in studio interview. Um, I know you didn't come here for me, but thank you for making time for me. You're welcome. And Nugget is an absolute gem. He's absolutely gorgeous. Your guide dog and well-behaved. And, and thank you to the uh, Seeing Eye Dog um, in Morristown, New Jersey, because they have been around for decades and, and doing incredible work. They have. And thank you to uh, someone special who didn't want to be thanked for aligning this interview. You will remain anonymous, <laughs> but we appreciate it. Laura, all the best to you. My name is Mark Farrell. If you'd like me to speak at your school, college, or corporation, check out MarkFarrellMotivation.com on overcoming adversity, drugs and alcohol, mental health, and more. Gary Knowles, next, the founder of this incredible network. Have a great day.